In the previous video, we looked at the particle models for the three states of matter, solid, liquid and gas. Depending on the temperature, a substance might be found as a solid, a liquid or a gas. So for example, at room temperature, water is found as a liquid. But if you cool it down in the freezer, it will turn into a solid, it will turn into ice. Or if you heat it up, it will turn into a gas by turning into water vapour. There are five different changes of state. Let's start by first looking at the changes of state that happen if you start off with a solid and heat up the substance. Heating a substance from a solid into a liquid is called melting. And again, heating a substance from a liquid into a gas is called boiling. On the other hand, you could start off with a gas and cool the substance down. If you cooled a gas, into a liquid, that is called condensing, or if you cool the liquid into a solid, that is called freezing. It's really important to work out whether you're talking about heating a substance up or cooling it down. So the temperature at which something melts and the temperature at which something freezes will be exactly the same for a particular substance. And it all depends on whether you're heating that substance up or cooling it down as to whether you call it melting or freezing. The same rule applies for boiling and condensing. For a particular substance, boiling and condensing will happen at the same temperature. It just depends whether you're heating the substance up or cooling it down. For example, pure water will boil at exactly 100 degrees C. When you heat it up, it will turn from a liquid to a gas at that temperature. But let's say you started with water vapour, well the temperature it will condense at is exactly the same as the boiling point. The condensing point would also be 100 degrees C. A final change of state, which goes directly from a solid to a gas, is called sublimation and this one is quite rare. One common mistake that people do is rather than calling the change of state from a liquid to a gas boiling, they accidentally and wrongly call it evaporating. You must call this change of state between a liquid and a gas boiling and not evaporating. With evaporation we will still be talking about liquid turning into a gas. However you could quite happily walk through this puddle and not get your feet burned because this evaporation is not happening at the boiling point of water which is 100 degrees C. With the evaporation of this puddle, only the particles with enough energy and those travelling in the right direction will leave the puddle. So evaporation happens at much lower temperatures and we can't use that word for describing the change of state. Evaporation can be useful however. Sweating cools you down by evaporation. The water particles with the most energy evaporate and therefore this has a cooling effect. Pure substances, so what I mean by pure is those made out of only one element, have exact boiling and melting points. You'll notice when you look at these tables online that they won't have tables for condensing and freezing points because as I said before, the melting point is exactly the same as the freezing point for a substance and the boiling point is exactly the same as the condensing point. So you'll often only see tables with melting and boiling points in. So if you had a lump of copper for example, you would know that if that was a pure substance it would melt at exactly 1083 degrees. And if you heated it up further, copper would boil and turn into a gas at 2,567 degrees exactly. Let's look at oxygen for example. We're used to seeing oxygen as a gas, but if you cooled that down, it would condense at minus 183 degrees C, and if you cooled it down even further, it would freeze at minus 218.4 degrees C and you'd have solid oxygen at that temperature. You can work out whether a substance is pure or not by looking at a graph of its melting or boiling point. You can see here we've got temperature along the side 
and time along the bottom. If we heated a substance up over time, for a pure substance, you would see a flat part on the graph like this region here. At this point here, the substance is changing state. So any horizontal line on a heating or cooling curve represents a change of state. And when the substance is pure, that will be an exact horizontal line at a particular temperature. So in this case, 60 degrees where the change of state is happening. On the other hand, this graph represents a mixture rather than a pure substance. So if you have a mixture of different metals or a metal with some impurities in it or another substance with impurities in it, then rather than having a flat, straight, horizontal line on your graph, you will get a wiggly line like this. So this wiggly line is where this change of state is happening, but it shows that the substance is actually a mixture and not a pure substance. Hi guys, if you enjoyed that last video, then please click on the screen to subscribe. You can also find all my videos in one place at gcserevisionmonkey.com. If you're a teacher, check out the Key Stage 3 package at sciencesurgery.com. It contains all of the Revision Monkey videos as well as loads more Key Stage 3 resources.